The SEC has a Texas problem, y'all, and we saw it happen in their first marquee game against Georgia at home in the SEC. Yes, they played Mississippi State, but that didn't carry the same weight that the dogs coming into town did, the other dogs, and we all knew that. And what we witnessed is a series of troubling precedents if the league doesn't do better. Let's start with the statement that the SEC put out about Texas's fans throwing things out onto the field after that penalty for a pass interference was overturned, which gave Texas an interception, something that's never happened. Uh, it's different than when officials call a penalty, huddle immediately after, and wave it off. That's not what happened here. Don't let the league statement convince you that that's what happened if you didn't see it happen. That is not what went down. They called a pass interference. It was the wrong call, by the way. It was a terrible penalty on the field. But what happened after that is even worse because you saw SEC officials do something they've never done before, to my knowledge, which is watch a replay on the Jumbotron and decide that they could wave off the penalty after they'd already spotted the ball and allowed some time to run off the clock. You're not allowed to do that. You are not legally in the rules of the SEC rule book, the NCAA rule book, allowed to do that. Here's the SEC statement that came out at 1.16 a.m. after the game. With 3.12 to play in the third quarter of the Georgia at Texas game, Texas intercepted a pass at the Texas 46-yard line and returned it to the Texas 9-yard line. They actually returned it to the Georgia 9-yard line, but when you're under the gun for those tight 1 a.m., press release deadlines, the facts can be hard to check. Texas was flagged for committing defensive pass interference on the play, which resulted in Georgia maintaining the ball with the first down. The game officials gathered to discuss the play after a five-minute delay of game for stadium crew to pick up trash. That that last part I didn't uh, read from the statement. I just wanted to clarify because for some reason, the league statement omits that context. The game officials gathered to discuss the play, which is permitted to ensure the proper penalty is enforced, at which time the calling official reported that he erred and a foul should not have been called for defensive pass interference. Consequently, Texas was awarded the ball at the Texas nine-yard line. So not only do they make that uh, mistake once, they make it twice. Uh, Attention to detail, apparently a problem across the board. The SEC is trying to tell you all that, that you're dumb that you didn't see what you saw. They're trying to change the facts of what happened, and they think they can just get away with it. And there's no way to hold them accountable outside of what their league policies are. You know, I think uh, officials are graded. The better your grade is, the better games you get to call in the postseason, something like that, the difference between the, the playoff and the, and the Citrus Bowl. I don't know how all that still works out, but whether or not that's on the line for this crew, I don't know. Some other weird things going on there, which I'll get to in a moment. While the original evaluation and assessment of the penalty was not properly executed, it is unacceptable to have debris thrown on the field at any time. So let me, let me translate for you a little bit. Now the league is telling you that it's not the fact that our officials went rogue and did something that they're not allowed to do. Uh, it's the fact that Texas fans threw trash on the field that we're really going to focus on here. Another point of context, those refs would not have changed the call if the fans did not bully them into it by delaying the game, throwing things on the field, cans, bottles, dangerous things. No, no wonder Ugga stayed at home. Ugga didn't make the trip. A lot of people said it was because they didn't want to worry about, uh, about Bevo running into him again. I think he made the smart call because now he doesn't have to worry about getting pelted by a tall boy filled with apple-flavored skull spit and uh, potentially lose consciousness as a small 11 pound, 11 to 14 pound white English bulldog. That could be fatal. The uh, the disruption of the game due to debris being thrown onto the field will be reviewed by the conference office related to SEC sportsmanship policies and procedures. Again, the SEC rushing the statement out at 1 a.m. Look, the the channels y'all watch that cover SEC football, if it's on ESPN, if it's on the SEC network, they're not going to tell you all this because obviously they they have their own conflicts of interest. But this statement 
compounds the problem that happened on the field. It has factual errors, it has omissions, and it glosses over what actually happened in the context of what happened. If the SEC owned up, said, hey, Texas fans, y'all delayed the game, y'all impacted our decision, and we missed an opportunity, we should not have changed the call on the field. None of that happens, though. They don't take accountability. They don't own up to what happened. And what that tells me, outside of the context of Texas fans reacting like the other UT and the SEC and throwing trash on the field, what it tells me is that, A, other fan bases will now feel emboldened to do the same thing, throw things on the field, cause a delay of game, give the officials time to overturn the call. And look, if, if you want to make a rule change that we can review penalties now, I'm sure the SEC would love that because that gives you more commercial breaks. It gives you more time for uh, advertising spots, sell sponsorships, put, you know, put patches on the refs' jerseys. Uh, let them earn some money. Let the league earn more money that way. They're on TV enough as it is in this new TV package for that to be financially uh, logical. Maybe that's something they consider. But right now, that is not a rule. You cannot change a penalty after you've already spotted the ball. And that's what the SEC did. So there's that aspect of it, of the fallout moving forward. Will other teams consider this too? But what I really took from this is Texas is the new kid on the block in the SEC, but they're the most important kid on the block in the SEC. And if they don't get their way, they're going to make their presence felt until they do. And I'm not saying that the SEC is doing this. Uh, this is not InfoWars. What I will say factually is that the SEC benefits a lot from that Texas brand being competitive, being good at football, being number one. And I'm not saying this is why it happened. But the facts of the matter in this game are Texas keeping this game close with the recently two-time defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs benefits the SEC more than a blowout does, more than people switching to some other game, more than people seeing that Texas isn't really ready for league play. Look no further than the cakewalk schedule that the league gave Texas in year one in the SEC uh, outside of Georgia, it's pretty manageable. Now, we didn't know that Vanderbilt was going to be a world beater in the league uh, when they made that schedule, and I think that one's probably kind of a, a surprise for the SEC and, and could be for Texas. But Texas has a lot of things going in Texas's favor, and what we learned is Texas is going to throw that weight around, and Texas has walked right into the SEC and declared, we're your bell cow. We're the most important thing here. If that happens at Mississippi State, if that happens at Missouri, do the SEC officials, I'm just putting this question out there. You can answer it how you see fit. Do the SEC officials feel as much pressure to overturn the call? Tennessee was fined $250,000 when they threw mustard bottles and golf balls and everything else at Lane Kiffin in 2021. Um, so the SEC saying that they'll, they'll review it in a similar fashion uh, for Texas. And what they also did at Tennessee was they went in and used their uh, satellite camera zooms to find the individuals who threw things and they banned them from games. So... We'll see what happens there, but that's, that's an important element of what happened, but um, the officiating is the most important thing about why that happened, and I don't think this looks good. I don't think this looks good moving forward for the SEC uh, if they don't do better, but let's continue. Not only did the officials blow that, you know, the handling of that, interception interference call. Watch Trevor Etienne's touchdown 
that was reviewed that shows his uh, hand going over the, the goal line. They reviewed that and said it wasn't a touchdown. Now, it benefits Georgia because they had a couple more tries to get it in, and it ran about a minute off the clock, maybe a little less. Uh, but that's one that was a little strange. There was the first down that wasn't, that was reviewed at the end of the game that clearly shows that ETN had the first down. The handful of targeting calls, the lack of consistency on the targeting calls, uh, targeting remains one of the most mysterious things in college football and one of the most impactful and yet another way that officials have altered, controlled, changed the outcome of games this season. Um, that penalty is, is very harsh and I understand the protection element of it, but if you don't really know what it is, can you be that definitive in how you levy the punishment of it? So Georgia loses two players Dan Jackson and Janelle Aguero in the second half, so that affects them against Florida as well. K.J. Bolden, sounded like they, in the booth, they really wanted uh, that, that play to be reviewed as well, but that uh, did not end up happening for K.J. Bolden. Weird thing that, I'm, that I've all but confirmed, Matt Leffler, the head official in the game, is a Texas resident, went to TCU, and one of his sons either attended or is still attending Texas. Now, I know of at least one other instance that I heard about today where an official in the SEC is not allowed to call games due to the fact that his stepson goes to one of the SEC schools. So whatever school that, that relative goes to, that official does not call games. The precedent Again, I'm, I'm using that word a lot, but there's a precedent now that has apparently been broken. Now, I don't know if the SEC didn't know about this or they overlooked it or they just allowed it to happen. But if that's the case, you again are, are allowing bias to creep in and subconsciously or legitimately consciously affect the outcome of the game. Again, not, not laying any accusations out there, but if there's a precedent for it, then why was that precedent not followed? If that is indeed true, then someone should also be held accountable for that, uh, just objectively, objectively speaking. The other thing that comes out of this is Kirby Smart's post-game comments to Katie George on ESPN. He says that they, you know, he calls out ESPN for doubting him, but he also calls out the officials and says that they tried to rob Georgia in the game and uh, steal the game from him. Georgia overcame it, and that was really impressive. I think that was the most impressive thing that Georgia did was overcome that five-minute delay, have it overturned in a way that no team has ever seen something overturned, and still go get the dub. Um, you know, in 2020, Lane Kiffin, this guy just stays in the headlines for officiating and controversial officiating, but Lane was fined $25,000 in 2020 for criticizing officials. Maybe that's gone up uh, with the economy and with, with Texas now being in the league. Maybe that fine goes up. I don't know. But if Kirby is fined maybe around that ballpark and Kirby can scratch his nose and have that money uh, fall out of his sleeve. So I don't think he's too worried about that. Um, but that'll be interesting to watch. And then Josh Brooks, Georgia's AD, did send out a post on X about the call, and uh, I, I really admire Georgia's leadership in this. Kirby had a right to call out what he did, and I like how Josh Brooks handled this. This is part of what he said on X. Uh, he says, disagreeing with the singular call is natural and will happen several times in every football game. I can accept that. What I cannot accept is the manner in which this specific call was reversed. The official claimed he erred in the call. My question is, when did he realize the error? valid. If it was before the delay that occurred due to fans throwing objects on the field, what stopped him before the head official made the announcement and spotted the ball? Also valid. I have faith we as a conference will learn from this and get better. We must because in the SEC it just means more. I'll wrap up on this. Again, no accusations here, but the facts being what they are, Tim Donahue is a real thing that happened. 
If you're not aware of what happened there, NBA official that fixed games. There's a great podcast about it called Whistleblower, and uh, I highly recommend you listen to that. Zero accusations here. But if the SEC wants to get above board on this and not fall into that same category of doubt about what's happening in its games and this era of sports gambling with the knowledge now of how games can be fixed through officiating. Again, I, I can't say this enough because I don't want anybody in the comments to say that I'm, I'm complaining and need to have a tinfoil hat on. I'm just saying for the SEC to protect its best interest, you know, the league has to do a better job in the games and it has to do a better job in addressing when they messed up. That statement that came out at 1 a.m. is the worst part about all of this. It doesn't accept any fault, puts the blame on nobody, really, and then just has a milk toast statement about how it'll hold Texas accountable for throwing trash, even though they didn't during the game when it should have been a delay of game. This whole thing was a huge mistake from top to bottom. The call on the field was bad. Overturning it illegally was bad. The statement was bad. And letting Texas walk into your house and basically say, we're going to throw what we want to throw until we get what we want. If they don't nip that in the bud, that's not the last time we're going to see something like that happen. Not in the SEC, not in college football, definitely not at Texas because I got a four-year-old, I got a one-year-old. You reward bad behavior, you're going to get a whole lot more of it. And if that happens, the SEC, it, again, it benefits from Texas being good but it hurts itself more and it is more damaging to your brand to let Texas do what it did on Saturday night against Georgia. Uh, it's more damaging than it is beneficial. Adding Texas to the league will only hurt the brand of the SEC, not help it if they don't do better than what they did on Saturday. I don't know if they'll fix it again, if they'll try to come out with another statement later on in the week. Easy solution, make refs do post-game press conferences instead of sending out email press statements at 1 a.m. I'd love to be at one of those. Just means more, baby. See ya.